What up, guys? Nick from Fisherman Source got one for you on uh, the old flutter spoon. They speak for themselves. I'll talk a little bit about how we fish them um, and why we fish them and when we fish them. Now, make sure you have a swivel. Make sure you have good split ring, uh, good treble hooks. You're going to see here throughout this video just a couple little clips of me working a spoon. You know, kind of some of the marks that we look for on the on the machine. A couple things is you know you got bunker, you have a bunker pod, and there's fish beneath it. You know, fishing in it and around it is always good. Sometimes I'll drop the spoon right through a bunker school and just let it sit on the bottom. And let the bunker move my line or I mean, twitch it once in a while. There, there's a million things you can do working a flutter spoon. These are all the nickels. You know, there's a, a bunch of companies making them now, but I really kind of just stay fishing the, the nickels. I have so many of them and I don't, I don't find the need to change. They work for me and so I don't really see the need to explore. Typically, I know, I know you're seeing here that I'm fishing with a spinning rod. Almost always I'm fishing these with a bait caster you know, without getting into it, but a three, 400 size Lexa or, or Tranx. So I really like slow pitch rods for them. I really like the Jigging World Black Demon, which is not a slow pitch rod, but just a rod that I use a lot. For the most part, you're gonna have have a long jigging stroke up and then drop the rod tip on slack line. You're really trying to fish the spoon on the flutter. So you're really only jigging it, in my opinion, to get it to flutter. You're always gonna hit it, almost always gonna hit it while it's falling. So understanding that and the mechanics of that will help you kind of of figure out how you want to fish the thing depending on the conditions you know you'll see right here sometimes i get hit when it's just sitting there and i'm not doing anything uh, as you can see i was videoing my friend matt with a fish and i got slammed um that's common i mean if you have a good drift and the and you can keep the spoon down it's still swimming kind of like a like a like a maja spoon like a trolling bunker spoon sometimes we'll take two or three real sharp cranks and then let it sit there for a second nothing happens drop it back down but sometimes three quick cranks you let it sit there and it wobbles they smack it like that there's no right or wrong way to do it you know you, you want to be fishing them in the right situations obviously if your bottom machine is lit up with fish that's a good time on the bottom that's a good time to drop a bunker spoon uh, but i like it a lot when you see scattered marks throughout the water column where it's kind of a difficult thing to think of something else to throw maybe a big plug but you know i'll work the, the spoon all, all the way throughout the column sometimes i'll cast it out a little bit even and work the spoon back to me but typically you want to fish it when you have a good drift and 15 or 20 feet of water or more and if you can keep it down and you can fish it and there's fish on the bottom it's going to work they're going to bite it until next time we'll see you